So again, thanks, thanks for joining us. Um, today's webinar is a uh, kind of a follow-up from our employer branding and talent attraction uh, webinar that we did a couple of weeks ago. And uh, some of the slide decks uh, are from that uh, webinar as well that uh, actually do apply uh, and are applicable to, to this uh, topic today. So the topic today is, you know, how much should you spend or how much should your organization spend on employer branding to reach your ROI? And obviously this is a very difficult question to answer. So uh, hopefully the data and the content and, and the uh, ideas that I'm gonna share with you today will give you the tools needed to be able to answer this question. And we also do want to answer this question by the end of uh, the webinar today. So let's dive in. Uh, so the contents for today is uh, I'm gonna introduce for those of you who, who don't know myself and, and our company, uh, introduce a little about MotionWorks and what we do uh, and our team here. Um, point out some key statistics and data related to uh, employer branding uh, globally, as well as in uh, Japan and also uh, data related to budgets and, and what companies are spending on branding. Another one that we're gonna talk about is, you know, identifying who is actually responsible for employer, employer branding within an organization. Uh, and then the next part, we're gonna dive into questions to evaluate your employer branding uh, strategy uh, that you can use to evaluate how, how strong or, or weak your employer branding strategy is. Uh, and those, the answers to those questions will also help us answer the ultimate question at the end, which is how much you should actually spend to get an ROI. We're also gonna look at some metrics. Um, there are quite a few metrics that you can look at and track uh, for employer branding. Uh, every organization has their, their own versions and their own metrics that they're looking at, uh, but we're going to show you some of the core ones that we think are important. And as mentioned uh, in, the, in the last part, uh, I am going to give you our answers uh, to how much you should be spending uh, to give you a better idea of what's involved and, and the scope of the budgets needed to do effective employer branding to, and to get an ROI. All right. So as uh, I mentioned in the last uh, webinar, we are uh, supporting different charities. And this year we are making an effort to support uh, Brent Conkle, who is the uh, president and CEO of BAC, Business Across Cultures. Uh, Brent's been a, a long time uh, HR professional and leadership training coach uh, here in Japan. And uh, recently he's had uh, multiple health issues uh, that has uh, put a burden on him financially, emotionally, and, and obviously physically as well. Um, so we wish the best for, for Brent and his family, and we're trying to do all our best uh, to help him and his family. So if you can take a look at uh, his, uh, the, the GoFundMe page that he created, uh, we do appreciate that you at least are aware of his battle that we're supporting, and uh, consider donating uh, any amount you can for Brent and his cause. So thanks for that. So on to a little about us. So as I mentioned, uh, my name is Brad, uh, Managing Director of Oceanworks KK, which is a uh, Japanese corporation here in Japan. Uh, we have, the office is actually out of my house in Saitama registered, but we also have a, uh, an office in Shinjuku that we use uh, that I'm actually producing this from today. Uh, and we have some great uh, team members that have been working with us uh, through the years, and we appreciate their help. Uh, Gail, who's a senior research associate, she helps with uh, research projects and operations, uh, a lot of data. And Yuki and Dennis are both uh, seasoned videographers that have been working with, with us on uh, multiple products uh, projects. Um, and they really do a great uh, effort on, on um, producing a lot of the media content we that we do for uh, corporate videos, as well as uh, motion graphics and uh, other media content. So those are the superstars of MotionWorks. 
And in terms of brand and, and what we do as like some of our brands, we have MotionWorks, which I mentioned is, is the actual company. MotionWorks Media um, is the service for corporate branding. We do corporate videos and those kind of things. Uh, MotionWorks Careers is really the bulk of what we do, which is really supporting uh, companies with employer branding and talent attraction. So it's a combination of really creating content that engages candidates in the market and also sourcing uh, and, and talent attraction for various companies that we work with and driving uh, talent to their brand. And MotionWorks Learning is, is kind of a beta stage. Uh, we work with some companies to do training videos, online training videos and, and uh, language learning and those kind of things. Uh, and it's very video uh, and branded related. So uh, we have started up that brand as well. And then the Coffee for Closer series we started off was um, uh, interviews with uh, influencers and um, leaders in, here in Japan, company owners, uh, recruiters, uh, HR professionals here in Japan uh, to really highlight what they do and, and the organizations they work with. So those are some of the brands that we uh, produce under MotionWorks. And in general, we really focus on employer branding and uh, media content for talent attraction. So if you do have a need for those, uh, please reach out to us directly and we're more than happy to uh, assess your employer branding needs and talent attraction needs and, and, and find some, some good solutions for you. So, As for myself, I've, I've been in Japan, um, originally from the US. I've been in Japan here for over 20 years and a majority of that time has been spent uh, in HR consulting, training uh, and recruiting. And I really made a, a conscious shift from the traditional recruiting style uh, a few years ago and, and started up MotionWorks with the intention of really putting the focus on uh, employer branding, specifically for talent attraction. Um, you know, there is a term of, of branding, but it's more about employer branding for talent attraction. That's really what I focus on. Um, so that's a little about me. This is a slide that uh, I, I used in our last uh, webinar, uh, and it kind of gives you the, the timeline of, of, of various things that happened here in Japan. But um, I, I wanted to bring it up in, in this webinar as well, just to, to kind of highlight that the tools that are available specifically for here in Japan uh, for attracting talent. And you know, a long time, we, we don't have that many more choices than we did. 20 years ago. Um, we do have these social media tools. Um, you know, there's indeed BizReach, Wantedly that has come out. LinkedIn is obviously uh, now more of a, a marketing platform than it is a, a networking platform. So I think everyone knows these things and, and, and you know, we put them on our website and, and, and we have these things, but I don't think companies are really doing a great job at using them to engage the candidates, uh, especially in a, a candidate-driven market. I think that you can do a lot more from the content side and the media side to uh, use these more effectively. Uh, one in particular, like you know, some people, almost no one is using is, is Clubhouse and TikTok, which it's still quite new and no one really knows how to do it. But um, I, I do recommend you know, diving into them and, and start experimenting with some of these because um, we do need to expand our portfolio. And, you know, maybe five years or even five days from now, there's going to be six other apps that, you know, come up that we're going to need for, for talent attraction, right? So uh, the, the more that we familiarize ourselves with what's available and, and, and how we can use them to attract talent and, and actually create a brand, uh, the, the more ahead of the game you're going to be. And this slide is also from uh, the last webinar, but again, I wanted to highlight uh, not so much on all of the challenges that companies face re, uh, regarding employer branding, but more specifically the budget, because in this uh, webinar, we're focusing on how to get a good ROI. So any money that we're spending, um, you know, how can we get a, a clear ROI? But more importantly, you know, how can we get more budget for employer branding, which some companies really struggle to do, whether you're a decision maker or an individual contributor, 
you know, everyone needs to justify the budget for new things. Um, and in this case, it's employer branding and, and getting this budget approval and, and increasing that budget, um, you need a lot of information. You need to have a lot of data to go to present people to get a bigger budget. And that's what this webinar is about. It's gonna show you a lot of the data needed um, in order to get that budget increased and, and start experimenting with uh, employer branding. Okay, so one of the uh, infographs that I uploaded on my LinkedIn feed uh, a few days ago was this one, uh, which is basically talking about the, the average cost per hire. Um, this is globally, they, they included uh, APAC as well, uh, but it's from a lot of different companies, uh, sorry, a lot of different companies located in different countries. And the low end, I, I just use this for the low end and the high end of what some companies are spending on, uh, you know, per hire. So SHRM, the Society of uh, Human Resources Management uh, came up, uh, this is probably about a year ago, uh, around 4,000 US dollars or around 450,000 yen uh, per hire. Uh, whereas on the higher end, uh, NACE uh, came up with something around 7,000, uh, $7, $7,500 or about uh, maybe 850,000 yen. Uh, honestly, if I, I think in Japan specifically, uh, because recruiting rates are going up and, and, and different things. Uh, it's just so competitive. I think this is, number is actually much higher in Japan, the cost per hire. You know, so those are one of the things that we're going to address is, you know, do you actually know the average cost per hire uh, for your organization? Because it's very important to know uh, when you're trying to get a, a budget. The other uh, infograph that we're going to take a look at is uh, this is showing the, um, the amount of money that companies are spending on employer branding based on their company size. Now, obviously this number I think is actually quite low. Uh, this is for companies between one to 500 employees. I think if companies are spending that limited amount, uh, they're not gonna have an effective employer branding strategy. But then on the high end, I think for companies around one to, to 4,000 or something. This would be kind of on the high end, uh, I think. Definitely not in this range. I think if you're producing, uh, if you have this budget, um, you know, you're, you're looking at much larger matrix organizations for, for branding. Uh, but what I'm trying to highlight in a lot of the webinars that we're doing, including today, is there are some cost-effective uh, employer branding strategies that you can implement that are cost effective that would be in this range, but you have to be consistent and consistency costs. So I think this number you really have to look at in terms of annually, how much are you spending uh, for your uh, effective employer branding strategy? So they came up with 129,000 uh, US dollars as the, as the average amount that companies are spending for um, employer branding. And again, this is back in 2016. So this number probably has gone up uh, quite a bit. A couple of other uh, percentages that are very relevant to this one is, uh, you know, if you, if you're not doing employer branding, right? So if you're looking at, um, you know, this is from 2014. Um, I think this data is still very, very accurate and has probably increased uh, the percentage since then. But um, this is based on a 2014 uh, report based on the percentage of candidates that are likely to apply to companies that have a strong employer brand. So if you're using, if you're getting your brand out there and what you guys are, are, are doing, your culture, the types of jobs that you're offering and what it's like to work at your organization, 94% of the the market is, is more inclined to apply to you, uh, to your company, if you have that brand. Um, and also, if you can get that direct talent to your brand, then you're going to reduce your, your overall recruiting fees uh, and your budget uh, by 22%. You know, so that's going to ultimately save money. I think this is definitely going probably over 30% uh, by at this point, that you could easily save 30% uh, 
uh, on recruiting fees um, by having an effective employer brand. And again, uh, looking at the breakdown of what companies, uh, where they're actually spending that money. So if you're looking at the, again, the 129,000 on average that companies are spending on branding, uh, most of it is going for content. Uh, but then it's also going to things like events. So probably prior to COVID, it was more, uh, you know, career events, career forums, face-to-face uh, -face events, but now it's more online events. Uh, also referral, uh, employee referral programs, uh, investing in technology, and you know, experimentation is, is really anything. That, that's, um, it, it probably falls under content, but you know, really experimenting with different things related to branding. Um, so I thought this was really good that some companies are actually experimenting with uh, different ideas uh, in their budget for employer branding. Okay, so on to the question of who should be responsible for employer branding. Uh, this was this question has come up quite a bit um, in the discussion. If you if you Google uh, employer branding and who's responsible for it, but ultimately most of the sources will tell you that. Uh, you know, the HR team is responsible for that. And how your human resources team is structured, you know, usually TA and recruiting is a part of that, but it could be a separate team or entity depending on how that your company is organized. So um, other people think it's, it's the PR and marketing uh, teams. Um, and then a, a smaller percentage think that corporate planning or the executive team should, should be leading this. Um, honestly, I think it's everyone. Um, I, I think that if a company thinks that employer branding is only um, is responsible for only one one team in, in the organization, then that's um, that's not a, an effective employer branding strategy. Um, you know, it, I, I think everyone in the company, all the teams, have to share the burden of implementing and freeing up their budgets for employer and branding and, and getting involved, right? Because if you only have your, your, your TA manager doing all the heavy lifting, um, or you only have a marketing manager, you know, pushing talent attraction and employer branding initiatives, um, it's not really fair. Uh, it really has to come from the top and it really has to go throughout the organization about the importance of employer branding. So, you know, a, a lot of the discussions that I come into with companies is, oh, you know, we have a recruiting budget, uh, but we don't have a marketing budget or, oh yeah, we have a, a marketing budget, but we don't have a recruiting budget. Actually, every company has a recruiting budget, but um, you know, that, that's, that type of logic is what you come across a lot. And that just restricts if, you know, developing an effective uh, employer branding strategy. So uh, again, I think it's everyone's responsibility in the company to take part in the employer branding initiatives and also the budget. And then that's when you can start having uh, or seeing an ROI uh, if everyone is, is taking part. Okay. So the next part is, uh, you know, again, questions that I came up with uh, that I think you need in order to evaluate how effective your employer branding strategy is, uh, especially related to ROI. So with these questions, um, I want to kind of put a number on it. So there are 10 questions, uh, 10 out of 10. If you get 10 points, you're doing quite well. Um, if you answer yes to, to any of these questions, you get one point. And then we'll evaluate what your score means uh, at the end of the questions. Um, you know, these are questions, uh, there could be 50 or 60 questions, to be honest. Uh, but these are just what I thought were relevant core questions that any organization needs to be able to answer in order to evaluate their employer branding and our ROI. Uh, one point for yes, nothing for no or maybe, or I don't know. Okay, so the first question is, 
going back to the slide, um, do you know your, your cost per hire? Yes or no, one point. Number two, you know, do you know your turnover and retention rates? Uh, very important number to know. Three, uh, you know, do you know which recruiting resources are the most cost effective? Which ones are you using that uh, you know produce a, a very good, um, even if they are expensive, that they're producing good results? And four, do you know uh, how your company is perceived in the market and why? So this is, and you, you have to answer yes to, to both. Um, you know, how is your company and your image and your brand perceived in the market? Is it good or bad? And why is that? Um, it has to be both. And five, do you conduct uh, employee satisfaction and exit surveys? Uh, there's so much good information that comes, you know, even if you, don't have a, a high turnover rate, uh, but you're interviewing the people that leave the company, um, it, there's great information that comes from it. And that's also branding as well, right? Because it shows that you're, you care about the people that leave, even if they move on to something else. Um, you know, so do you have them uh, in place? And do you have, you know, is that information accessible to everyone? Six, do you have a budget specifically for employer branding? So again, going back to who's responsible for it, um, is that budget coming from another area like recruiting? Uh, or do you have a budget just for uh, employer branding? It's a good thing to have. Seven, uh, is your, uh, do you have a user-friendly and engaging career page? Um, again, both, it needs to be yes for both. Uh, you might have a, a really cool looking career page, but it's not engaging. There's no content or there's nothing there that makes the um, potential candidates apply or click here or something, right? So it has to be user-friendly and it has to be engaging. And eight, do you have a strong uh, employer value proposition? You know, are there a lot of incentives? You know, these days it's like uh, work from home, those kind of things, but even that is... Um, you know, becoming kind of a standard. So what is it that, uh, you know, your EVP, what is it that you guys have that uh, differentiates you uh, and makes your employees happy um, that you can actually use for branding? And do you have a clear, fast and effective interview process? Um, you know, that really is, is, a, is a time burner. I mean, the, the, the time to, to hire now is just getting so fast. Um, and if you are slow in getting back to candidates and stuff, um, it, it really restricts your ability to get top talent. You know, so um, if you have yes, that's a good thing. Um, and and you that is very. If you do have a very good and fast and effective interview process, it's definitely something that you should be talking about uh, through stories and video and content. And last, uh, is your employer branding? better than your main competitors. If you know it is and you know why it is, then that's, that's your, you're going to be ahead of the game. Okay, so simple, tally up your, your points. Uh, every question is worth one point. If you scored more than five points, which hopefully uh, you did, uh, you probably have a good chance uh, of achieving a, a really good ROI with your employer branding strategy. Um, but if it's less than that, or if some were kind of gray area, then you probably need to uh, definitely find out how to get those numbers and how to get that information, um, and then really create a, a strategy around that. Okay. And again, it, it also goes back to, um, you know, getting a budget. So if you don't have, if you cannot justify uh, with numbers and, and strong data that you need a bigger budget for employer branding, um, you know, it, it's, it's almost a, a moot point uh, to, to ask for more money if, if you don't have those uh, numbers ready and the data ready. Okay, so I, I've changed the wording of the question uh, to, to more uh, first person. So this is something that when you look at this, you should read it aloud and say it to yourself. So how much should we as an organization or I spend on employer branding to achieve 
uh, you know, our ROI, the company's ROI. So the biggest thing is, is core metrics. Um, you know, do you have the right metrics that you can measure, track, uh, measure and track? And then also accurately, you, you can actually calculate uh, the budget you need for employee branding. So these are, you know, there, there could be 50, 60, 100 different metrics. Uh, each company have their, has their own metrics uh, that they are going to measure that they think are the essential ones. Uh, these I've just listed here, sorry. Um, these I've just listed here, uh, you know, cost per hire, retention rates, uh, source of effectiveness, candidate engagement rates, brand awareness. I mean, the list goes on and on about different metrics that you can have, uh, but they have to be measurable and you have to be able to track them. And again, if you, if you know uh, your core metrics, then you can figure out uh, which parts of branding you want to concentrate on. Do you want to um, you know, put more of it on content? Do you want to focus on events? Do you want to focus on the technology side? You know, where do you want to allot those uh, things in your, in your strategy? And the other really important thing that uh, I, I really want to, to get across today is the understanding of low engagement, low touch, and high engagement, high touch employer branding. Um, this list, I, I know many people will probably disagree with me, but I actually don't count these things as employer branding. I think it's very low engagement and low touch. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, I think we've got to get past these in this candidate driven market. And definitely in 2022, that's going to be the push. I, I think we're going to see fewer of these things. I hope we see fewer of these things because they're not engaging. They're very low engagement, low, low touch uh, things that we've been using for a long time that don't work anymore. Um, and I'll get back to that. I know many people will probably disagree on this point. Um, and I'm, I'm going to you know, back that up with, with a, a couple more slides next. But you know, if we're still using stagnant job posts and, and then legacy job boards that don't show what culture you have or the type of people that are actually doing these jobs that you're advertising, um, it's just going to have very low impact on your bottom line. Um, you know, even, you know, newsletters, possibly depending on the content, I'm not saying that, uh, but, you know, promoted ads, scouted mails, uh, even career pages that don't engage, um, it, it's just very low engagement. On the contrary, um, looking at high touch, high engagement employer branding metrics and, and, and content that you can do. So, you know, things like employee insights, uh, you know, getting it straight from uh, people that are, have been working and, and, and that are loyal from, from your company. Uh, company events, you know, going out, these things, uh, success stories, you know, somebody that got uh, promoted to this, 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 and this, those things are very effective. Um, industry insights, you know, showing your knowledge about a particular, whatever your product is or your services. Um, leadership, getting the, the C-suite and the leadership involved in the branding process, that's huge. Uh, showing the interview process, as we mentioned, uh, the candidate experience, um, you know, what, it, what does it take them through the interview process and, and what they do from day one and those kind of things, creating that content is huge for, for, for um, high engagement in the market right now. Again, webinars and online events. I mean, again, there's lists of many things that you could do um, that are high engagement and high touch and, and not the low engagement ones. But at the same time, I understand that we, that, you know, we have to, get, there aren't a lot of new tools out there, right? So we have to rely on the, on the usual suspects and the usual tools. So uh, again, an idea is that, okay, let's say that you, know, you, you have a low success rate of, of stagnant job posts, but you, you've purchased a bunch of job boards or whatever, and, and you, have to, you have to use them, you have no choice. Um, okay, you know, complement that with creating some content and videos or something uh, related to current employees that, that work there, right? So, and then just, you know, hyperlink that into your next job post 
you know, so instead of, hey, we're hiring, you know, check out this job description, direct mail me. Um, and also check the link. We've created a video that shows somebody that's actually doing this job, you know, something like that. So, so mix it with uh, high engagement and low engagement type. Same thing, if you have a career page, um, throw in some employee insights in there, uh, whether it's, you know, hopefully not too text-based, but uh, more video related or something engaging uh, content, show the interview process. What's stage one, what's stage two, be very visual about it. Um, you know, throw that into your career page. If, you, if your career page isn't that great, um, or even throw it onto a, you know, a, a job post or something. So mix it up and, and find better alternatives to uh, just kind of the legacy tools that we're using. Okay, and, and again, you know, taking a look at this, you know, how much is it costing uh, to use the low touch, low engagement contact, you know, um, and consider, you know, is it effective and could we replace it with better content? Um, so that's just something to think about that, you know, it, it doesn't cost anything to think about replacing something, right? So the budget is the same. You're just allotting these new ideas instead of using the old ideas. Um, and that's really what I wanted to try to get to. And again, um, going back to the whole purpose of this um, webinar today, again, getting back to the, the, the question. How much should we spend on employer branding to achieve a positive ROI? So hopefully, um, you know, there was enough content in today's session to really uh, give you enough knowledge and information to be able to answer that. But I also want to give an answer or our answer to that question. And here are some possible answers that I think. So, so how much should we spend on employer branding to achieve a positive ROI? Well, let's spend the same amount that we spend on uh, recruiting fees for two positions, something very tangible. So, okay, you know, we're working with an agency at 30% at, uh, or 35% or whatever. Um, so it's gonna cost X amount of, of yen that, to, to hire that person. Now, so that, that's a good place to start with. So if that's 1 million yen or 2 million yen or 3 million yen, then, you know, let's spend 3 million yen on some branding content, something like that. Uh, it's something very tangible that you could do. Or, you know, the amount of money that we're spending on, on job posting uh, for six months or, or a year, uh, let's use a portion of that for, for branding. And then we can compare, okay, this part we used for branding, this part we used for job posting, which one was the most effective? Um, for example, same thing, web design. Uh, maybe, you know, you have to outsource it to a web designer or something to, to, to redesign uh, some of your career pages or something. Well, for the same amount of money that you would pay that, um, maybe come up with content to add to that page. Instead of changing the page, just create content uh, to throw on the page that, that can complement it. Um, and, and again, you know, a booth at a job fair, how much does that cost? Um, you know, a lot of them are online now, so it's probably a little cheaper, but um, you know, the, the other one is, is hiring a marketing manager. So, you know, how much does a marketing manager cost in your organization? You know, anywhere from like, you know, 6 million yen, 7 million yen, 10 million yen, 15 million yen. It depends on the size of the organization. But, you know, that person is only going to be able to come up with a strategy and some ideas. Uh, you're still going to have to outsource that. So for the cost of that uh, position, you know, you could use, I mean, that's what we try to do at, at MotionWorks is, is, is try to offset uh, your expenses by, by being able to produce the content and also offer, um, you know, a strategy and, and content as well. So these are just something tangible. You know, I, I wanted to have an answer for you. And, and this is uh, what we think. This is, uh, these are our answers uh, to that question. But the big thing is, you know, you really need to answer that question uh, by yourself or with your organization as, as a whole uh, to really come up with that. Okay, so again, these are just a few steps of um, getting to the process of understanding how much you should spend to get a good ROI. 
And one is, you know, know your metrics. So determine the metrics that you think matter the most uh, and just make sure they're measurable and that you can track them. And that's a good start. Uh, next, you know, compare your existing tools. So what is it, what tools are you using that, that work and keep those? And which ones aren't working so well that you could replace? And you know, determine a clear goal and you know, achievable goals and, and a budget for, to, to achieve those goals. And then develop a strategy for what you wanna do. Like, okay, let's create uh, employee insights or let get, let's get some of the leadership team involved and do some videos on that or something like that. Um, let's create some blogs or some industry content. Um, you know, think of a strategy of, of what you can use and, and how much it's going to cost. And share, you know, talk to your, to, talk to your colleagues, talk to your uh, executive, talk to your superiors and, and, and get buy-in um, even, you know, professionally or emotionally or whatever. Uh, and then you can get the, oops, sorry. And then you can get, you know, it's potential to get uh, a higher budget for, for branding. And lastly, and this is really where we come in, you know, take some risks, um, experiment. Um, we're happy to, you know, talk to you about cost-effective solutions that you can start uh, from a very small budget or even free um, that, that might work towards employer branding. But, um, you know, not doing anything uh, is not a good strategy and relying on the same kind of tools that, that we know don't produce great results um, is also not an option. So take some risks, take some time to, to really be a little more uh, strategic with your employer branding initiatives. And uh, yeah, we look forward to, to helping out. Um, so that's, uh, that's our presentation today. Um, thanks, for, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for more great content and uh, webinars and events uh, from MotionWorks. And uh, please also um, remember to, to take a look at uh, the site for Brent and the charities that we support. And uh, have a good weekend. And we appreciate uh, your time. And we look forward to supporting you on employer branding and talent attraction. All right. Thanks again. Talk to you again soon.